Welcome back. This episode from our Gauss Basics series will introduce the logical and relational operators. We'll start with the logical operators, then we'll compare matrices with the relational operators, and finish up by using these operators to perform logical indexing. The logical operators are pretty simple, so we'll go through them fairly quickly. They perform the common Boolean logical operations. Zero means false, and any non-zero value is true. They come in two forms. The standard version operates on scalars, while the dot version performs an element-by-element element computation. The first logical operator is not. It's the only operator in our list which operates on only one input. The not operator tests whether the operand is equal to zero in the scalar case, or whether the individual elements are equal to zero when using the dot not operator. The ones and zeros returned from these operations are normal Gauss matrices. Gauss does not have a different variable type for Booleans or logicals. Go ahead and pause the video if you want more time to look over the code for any of these operators. The AND operator tests whether both corresponding elements are non-zero. Our final two logical operators are OR and XOR. The OR operator tests whether either of the operands is non-zero. This is sometimes called the inclusive OR. The XOR operator performs the exclusive OR, testing whether only one of the input elements is non-zero. As we mentioned earlier, these logical operators, NOT, AND, OR, as well as XOR, are concerned with whether the element is zero or not zero. All of these operators treat missing values and NANDs as not zero. Next, we'll cover the relational operators. The relational operators make comparisons between Gauss variables. As you can see, they also have standard and element-by-element -element versions. However, the standard versions for the relational operators can also operate on matrices. Let's start with the less than operator. Here we have a simple example of all the cases. I expect you'll find this first section to be straightforward. The rest may be a little less obvious. The next case follows the E by E conformability rules that we covered in the last video. The statement A dot less than C is evaluating whether the elements from the first column of A are less than the zero in the first column of the row vector C, and whether the elements from the second column of A are less than the one in the second column of C. When two matrices are passed to the standard no dot less than operator, it will compute whether every element in the matrix on the left is less than the corresponding element on the right and return as single zero or one. Now we'll simply move through one screen of similar examples for the other operators. Feel free to pause the video if you want more time to view any of the operations that you see. In Gauss, missing values are simply a special type of NAND. Any two NANDs will evaluate as equal to each other as we see in these examples. But they never evaluate as greater or less than anything. Let's finish up with some practical examples. Gauss has two functions which allow you to select the rows of a matrix based on whether they meet or do not meet specific criteria. The first is CELIF, which stands for SELECT IF. CELIF will return a subset of a matrix based upon the second input, which is a vector of ones and zeros. CELIF will return the rows in which the binary vector contains a one. We'll use the dot less than operator and CELIF to extract all rows in which the second column of X is less than one. DELIF is the opposite. It will return all rows in which the corresponding element of the binary vector is a zero. We can use the same logical vector with DELIF to extract all rows which are greater than or equal to one. For a final example, we have a matrix with some blood pressure data. 
Our task is to extract the rows in which the systolic is greater than or equal to 120 and the diastolic is greater than or equal to 80. Our first step is to create a row vector with our limits for each column. Next, we'll use the dot greater than equal operator to create a two column binary matrix with our matches. But before we can pass this to Celif, we need to make it into a column vector. We'll do that with the sumr command. sumr will compute the sum across the rows of a matrix and return a column vector. As we can see, we have a row in which both columns matched our criteria. So our mask vector is not all zeros and ones. Fortunately for us in this case, Celif actually does not require the vector to be only ones and zeros. Celif, like the other logical operators we have discussed, actually is only concerned with whether the element is zero or non-zero. In this video, you've learned how to use the logical and relational operators to make comparisons between matrices and matrix elements and seen that applied to logical indexing. Next time, we'll show you how to create branching code with the conditional statements. See you then.